So Total War Pharaoh launched with just over 5,000 players, and I was personally waiting until the weekend to see if those numbers would bump up to maybe seven or 10,000, but here we are on Monday and they didn't even break 5,000 again, which is, I mean, let alone for a Total War title, is just not good for a new game at all. Now I'm not telling you Pharaoh isn't good, this is purely looking at the commercial success of the game and comparing it to other games like it, like Troy, which supposedly had over 7 million downloads for free on the first day on Epic, or Thrones of Britannia, which had a launch peak of 22,000 on Steam, you can see how Pharaoh didn't even scratch the surface of the Total War community, at least on the historical side of the franchise combining the peaks of all games right now, there are about 38 8,000 people playing, so we can definitely say this is a rejected game by the player base. And there are a number of possible reasons for this, of course. Price is the number one consideration for any purchase, so it's very likely for the majority of people who didn't buy the game, the price of $60 was not worth the value that Pharaoh delivers. This leads to the second reason, of course, which is value. A lot of people look at Pharaoh and don't see a game worth playing, either because the setting doesn't appeal, they don't agree with the scope of the map or the design of the gameplay, or they can see it still has plenty of issues from previous games. Thirdly, I think there's definitely a sizable chunk of the historical community who just wanted a major sequel to Medieval 2 or Empire. Medieval 3 and Empire 2 are consistently the most highly requested games and they have been for a number of years now. So while Pharaoh might be a good Total War game, it simply wouldn't appeal to a crowd who've been expecting a different product and don't really want anything else. And the final reason, of course, has to be all the other negatives around Total War and CA that have been going on for the last few months. Very weak post-launch support for Warhammer 3 generally, plus the highly priced latest DLC that offered lower value than usual, Hyenas, CA's biggest project outside of Total War being cancelled, all of this will not only burn goodwill, but will also shake the consumer confidence in whatever CA can deliver. So naturally, there will be a lot of people who might be interested in Pharaoh and what it has to offer, but would rather not support a company that has been acting in this way. There is of course another more ingrained subconscious reason, that is, the historical player base has been burned plenty of times already. If you're a historical player, you have no reason to give CA the benefit of the doubt, especially after games like Empire and Rome 2's abysmal launch, Attila being left in the dust with major technical issues like optimization, the low effort, high price of saga games like Thrones, Troy's free launch on Epic, and then rebrand and relaunch with a massive price on Steam with Mythos, and of course the last major historical game was Three Kingdoms, but that was mainly built around the romance mode with a watered down records mode. There are plenty of reasons for historical players everywhere to make them think twice before buying a new historical game. That's just the way things are. Now that doesn't mean CA is incapable of making a good historical game or that players won't know when a good thing hits them. What it simply means is if CA were to make a Medieval 3 Total War next year, it would have to launch with clear value that matches its price proposition. They would have to be a lot more communicative and transparent about how they make the game, what gameplay features it would launch with, what the DLC roadmap might look like, and they would need to listen to the community much more than they have been lately. In that regard, Pharaoh was a step in the right direction. Sophia really did listen to public feedback, but plenty of other issues of course overshadowed that. Pharaoh, if anything, showed that if CA is going to make a new Total War game that isn't Warhammer, it needs to reinvent itself. A new engine is definitely a must as every Total War game built on Warscape has plenty of issues that have carried over from game to game ever since the first iteration with Empire Total War. It would solve age-old issues with the battles, with sieges, with the unit behavior that players have been talking about for years. It's just a very natural next step that would show CA are getting serious. 
hilarious. So if they announce a new game next year, guys, and they say specifically they've built a new engine for it, you know this is the real deal. But it can't stop there. A new Total War would need a better AI. And I'm not talking about human level of intelligence and behavior. I'm talking about an AI that uses the mechanics and systems that are present in the game. Like the court system in Pharaoh, which is great on paper, but if the AI doesn't engage with it even a little bit, it kind of throws immersion out of the window. We need an AI to mimic strategic behavior on the campaign and tactical behavior in the battles, and none of that has really been good enough in Total War. It's been better in some ways in the latest games, don't get me wrong, but seeing the general bum rush the front line or seeing an army move away from a city you're besieging on the campaign, this stuff got old five games ago and needs to improve. For me, these are the two core issues right now that would go a long way to reinvent Total War, a new engine and a better AI. This is the absolute minimum, but there are other important considerations as well, whether it's the visuals of Total War that hopefully in a new engine can look more realistic and authentic, or the mechanics of a new game with more generational technology progression with mortal faction leaders, families, and meaningful economic and diplomatic management, or others. Total War needs to get back to a gameplay formula that is focused on kingdom building rather than character narrative. Pharaoh, at least, shows that kind of formula yet again is something many historical players don't agree with. If you're going to take anything away from this video, it's that the proposition of Pharaoh has clearly failed. Here are some likely reasons for that, and the main point here being, here is a pretty guaranteed way to make a new historical Total War that could be a lot more successful. It's really not rocket science. The historical player base has been talking about all of this for years now, but right now at this inflection point of rock bottom for Creative Assembly, I think it's important to say that at least for me, a path forward is to get these things, a new engine, generational gameplay, etc., done for a new historical game to get really good traction with the community. As for the future of Pharaoh, who knows? I mean, CA has committed to making four DLC packs for the Dynasty Edition buyers. Even though peak player count hasn't broken 6,000, I'm guessing about 12 to 16,000 people have actually bought the game. But I really think after the Steam cut, after tax, after refunds, Pharaoh has performed far below sales expectations, which could very well mean CA refunds Dynasty buyers and only releases one DLC for the game and move on. Thrones of Britannia launched with a peak of 22,000 players, more than four times the number that Pharaoh launched with, and it definitely had DLCs planned that never got released because we have this DLC button here in the main menu. So it's very, very possible for Pharaoh to get the same treatment of getting a few updates, maybe one DLC, and then to get the future of Pharaoh treatment that Three Kingdoms got. But that's just my guess. I mean, there's a possibility Troy might get combined with Pharaoh in a kind of immortal ancient empire style campaign, especially as plenty of Troy files are in Pharaoh's data. But I think given they'd have to do a lot of work to redo the factions to make sense for this time period with Phrygians, Achaeans, etc., I don't personally see it happening. If anything, I think the DLC packs are probably going to be a lot like Troy's, maybe some new playable factions for the cultures that are already present here in the game and then maybe one or two that add in an odd Assyrian or Greek faction as like hordes with unique mechanics. Overall, I wanted to make this video to talk a bit about my thoughts on Pharaoh's performance, why I think the player numbers are important to take into account, not for whether the game is good or not, but whether the game was successful commercially and among the Total War community. And how, based on all of this, I think a new historical game, if it ever happens of course, could be made better and delivered with more honesty and good value. It's a really hard time all around in Total War, but to me, this is really rock bottom. I don't see how CA could do any worse than a brand new game with the lowest player counts we've ever seen. Which means, depending on your point of view of course, things will hopefully improve from here, or we won't see another historical game ever again. Personally, I'm more of an optimist. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, give it a like and drop any thoughts or questions in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you think about Total War Pharaoh's launch, its future, and everything else I've discussed here today. Subscribe for more Total War content gameplay and news just like this, and thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.